There are some truly memorable days in the church calendar. Christmas Day, the celebration of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Palm Sunday, marking Jesus' humble entry into the city of Jerusalem. And with it the whole of Holy Week, culminating with Maundy Thursday and the Last Supper, the tragic events of Good Friday, and the glorious celebration of His resurrection on Easter Sunday morning. And then there's Pentecost, the spectacular spilling out of the Holy Spirit into the hearts and souls of the disciples and the birthday of the church. Beautiful, memorable days, all of which strengthens our trust and deepens our faith in the Lord. And then there's also the ascension of the Lord, which we've just celebrated 40 days after the resurrection. By and large, it's one of my all-time favourite days to celebrate. And the reason it's one of my favourite days is because it reminds me of the promise of what's to come. Now Luke, the Gospel writer, is writing to his friend Theophilus in his letter in the Acts of the Apostles in chapter 1. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Now I did say the ascension of Christ reminds me of the promise of what's to come. Jesus is coming back to claim us as his bride, as it were, to take us home. What a wonderful thing to look forward to. We read of this in Revelations 19, 7 to 9. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people. Then the angel said to me, Write this. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, These are the true words of God. This scripture passage is the promise about the marriage of the Lamb to his bride. That picture stands for the final union between Jesus Christ and the church. The symbolism of marriage denotes the intimate and indissoluble communion of Christ with the community which he has purchased with his own blood, a communion which is first reached in fullness by the host of the martyrs. The thought of the relationship between God and his people as a marriage goes far back into the Old Testament. Again and again the prophets thought of Israel as the chosen bride of God. I will betroth you to me forever, Hosea hears God say. I will betroth you to me in righteousness, Hosea 2, 19 and 20. Your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name, says Isaiah in 54 verse 5. Jeremiah hears God say and appeals, Return, O faithless children, for I am your master. And Ezekiel works out the whole picture most fully in Ezekiel 16. The marriage symbolism runs all through the Gospels. We read of the marriage feast in Matthew 22, verse 2, of the bride chamber and the wedding garment in Matthew 22, 10 to 11, of the sons of the bride maker in Mark 2, 19, of the bridegroom in Mark 2, 19 and Matthew 25, 1, and of the friends of the bridegroom in John 3, 29. Paul speaks of himself as betrothing the church like a pure virgin to Christ in 2 Corinthians 11.2. And for him the relationship of Christ to his church 
is the great model of the relationship of husband and wife in Ephesians 5, 21-33. In today's modern world, this may seem a strange metaphor to us, but it contains certain great and memorable truths. In any real marriage relationship, there must be four things which I believe must also be in the relationship between the Christian and Christ. Firstly, there is love. A loveless marriage is a contradiction in terms. Secondly, there is intimate communion, so intimate that man and wife become one flesh. The relationship of the Christian and Christ must be the closest in all of life. Thirdly, there is joy. There is nothing like the joy of loving and of being loved. If Christianity does not bring joy, it does not bring anything. And fourthly, there is fidelity. No marriage can last without fidelity. And the Christian must be as faithful to Christ Jesus as Jesus Christ is to him. The church, the bride of Christ, is clothed in fine linen, pure and shiny. There is a contrast with the scarlet and gold of the great harlot. The white linen represents the good deeds of God's dedicated people, and that is to say, it is character which forms the robe which arrays the bride of Christ. I recall a story that was told to me about a bride who was extremely nervous about her coming occasion. And the priest said to her, Just remember these three things. When you come into the sanctuary, you'll walk down the aisle, and you go up to the altar, and then we'll sing a hymn. Just remember those three things. Well, It was a beautiful wedding, but there was a titter of comment just before the bride and the groom came into the reception. For the rumour that was passing around the room was, Did you hear her say to herself as she was coming into church, I'll alter him. I'll alter him. But a deeper truth lies beneath that humour. The reality is the image of a bride hidden beneath a veil. And were we to lift up that veil, we would see a bride that is battered and bloodied, scarred and wounded. That image is too ghastly to comprehend, and we think it would or should never happen. But my friend, it has. For we are the bride, and we have been wounded by life, And we have been wounded by each other by us simply doing what we want and what suits us. How often we want to change the church for our own benefit and what suits us. But let me say this. The following passages reflect a beautiful image of the return of Christ to claim us as his bride and to take us home so that we may receive full healing and comfort and to be ultimately restored in full convalescence. In Isaiah 61 verse 10, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and has arrayed me in a robe of righteousness as a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. In Revelation 21 verse 2, I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And so, my friend, how do your wedding clothes look? Christ's invitation is to put on new clothes, wedding clothes, and to be prepared. May I ask you a personal question? What clothes have you been wearing? 
let me encourage you. Come to Christ today. Shed whatever clothes you've been wearing. Yes, and discard the clothes what others have wanted you to wear. You are the beautiful bride of Christ. So let me encourage you. Put on the beautiful wedding clothes of righteousness, holiness, purity and love for Christ as you prepare the rest of your life for him to come and take you home. God bless you. Amen.